Enemy tank. Big. Tough. Powerful. How'd you like to knock one of them out, soldier? It's not hard to do if you've got the right weapon for the job and a team that knows how to use it. Let's look at this new weapon, generally called the bazooka, which plays a song of death to the enemy. The team usually consists of two men, the gunner carrying the launcher and the loader with ammunition bags of three rounds each. The M1 rocket launcher is just a piece of pipe with a shoulder stock, hand grips, sights, and an electric gadget that fires the rocket. Here the loader shows you the two types of rockets. The M7 rocket, painted black with white letters, is practice ammunition. And the M6 painted OD with yellow lettering is loaded with high explosive. The difference between the two is that the black one is relatively harmless, while the M6 is deadly. It's simple enough. It's got a high explosive head. A powder charge in here propels it on its way. Tail fins at the rear guide it in flight and an electric wire shoots a spark into the powder charge when you pull the trigger. A lot depends on that wire. It's soldered to the insulated brass contact ring on the nose and taped to the body of the rocket here, here, and here. This wire then passes through the nozzle at the back of the powder tube into the igniter. The other electrical contact is made at the unpainted notch of one of the fins. That's all there is to it. But a lot depends on that wire, and you'd better check it carefully. If it's broken or its contacts are loose, your rocket's a dud. A safety pin passes through the striker mechanism and around the body of the rocket. A cord connects the safety pin to a plug that protects the propelling nozzle inside the fin. When the pin's in place, the rocket's safe. Once you've pulled it, watch out. If you drop it on its nose, it might not explode. But the chances are it would. This is no baby to be careless with. Here's the team going to work on a practice range. First, the gunner presses the trigger to test the electrical circuit. If it's OK, the little bulb in the left side of the stock will light up. If the bulb doesn't light, or any time the bazooka fails to fire, don't try to guess what the trouble is. Nine times out of ten, it's your battery's fault. Your bazooka is equipped with two batteries. Replace the old battery with a spare carried in the rear pocket. If the launcher still won't fire, check your trigger mechanism. It may need cleaning. When the bulb lights, the launcher's ready, and the gunner takes his firing position. The bazooka can be carried loaded. If necessary, it can be loaded and fired by one man. However, as you can see, this procedure is both slow and difficult. Two men can do a better job. There's a terrific back blast of flame when the rockets fire. Watch what it does to that white sheet. Get the idea? Rule number one, keep away from the rear of the launcher.
there are four firing positions. The standing position is about the same as the standing position with the rifle. The gunner is half face to the right, with his feet from one to two feet apart, body erect, and well balanced. The left arm is extended, with the left hand grasping the front hand grip, the right hand grasping the rear hand grip. The loader takes a position facing the firer's right shoulder and close enough to load rapidly and easily. In this position, you traverse by moving the body from the ankles up. While the gunner is tracking, the loader must keep away from the rear of the launcher. Other firing positions are prone, sitting, and kneeling. In the prone position, the spine is straight, the legs close together. The body must be kept at an angle of not less than 45 degrees to the line of aim. If it isn't, you're likely to get a hot foot or something worse from the back blast. The elbow should be well under the launcher, the left hand on the front hand grip, the right hand on the rear hand grip, and the stock placed firmly against the shoulder. The loader gets flat on the ground, resting on both elbows and at right angles to the line of aim. The loader should be opposite the firer's right shoulder and close enough to do his job. It is especially important when tracking a target that you remember to keep your body 45 degrees away from the bazooka's line of aim. The loader must move with the gunner not only to avoid burns, but to be able to serve the piece. In the sitting position, the gunner faces half right from the target with his legs crossed. He leans slightly forward from the hips with his back straight. The left arm is extended and the right elbow is up to form a pocket for the stock. Neither elbow should be rested. The launcher is held as in the standing position. The loader sits opposite the gunner's right shoulder at right angles to the line of aim. His legs are crossed right over left and he is close enough to the gunner to do his job without strain. The firer can traverse about 90 degrees without changing his position. The kneeling position is similar to the anti-aircraft position with the rifle. The firer kneels on his right knee with the buttocks well up and away from the right heel. The left foot is pointed at right angles to and opposite the right knee. The lower part of the left leg is perpendicular. The body is held erect. The loader kneels with one or both knees on the ground and faces the gunner's right shoulder. Traversing is done by moving the body from the waist up. With very little practice, you should be able to traverse 180 degrees. While tracking, the loader moves with the fire. Now let's take up sighting and aiming. The first step is range estimation. It should be constantly practiced by estimating the ranges to prominent points on the terrain which have been previously measured. Estimation of the range to moving targets should be especially practiced. At short ranges, the rocket is very accurate. The most effective ranges are from one to 200 yards or less. Due to the high trajectory, it is difficult to make hits at ranges over 300 yards. At extreme ranges, the trajectory is so high that if the target is under trees, the projectile may be exploded by the trees before it hits the target. Now let's take a look at the sight. This leaf is the rear sight. 
The front sight has four graduations for ranges of one, two, three, and four hundred yards. Always keep your eyes in line with the sights. Here is the proper sight picture at the 100 yard range. The 100 yard graduation of the front sight is aligned with the top of the rear sight and the target. You'll have to estimate intermediate ranges between the 100 yard grids. Here, for example, is the sight picture at 250 yards. Ranges over 400 yards must also be estimated. At these long ranges, you'll have to stretch your neck. At short ranges, hold low on the bottom of the target. Your usual tendency will be to overshoot, so hold her down. Watch this. The shot was low, but the rocket ricocheted and let go when it hit something solid. At moving targets, estimation of range and leads are Siamese twins. You can't separate them. In order to hit a moving target, you have to aim ahead of it, at the spot where the target will be when your rocket gets there. To do this, you must lead the target. One lead equals the length of a tank. In your training, you will be taught the exact leads to use to hit a moving target at various ranges and speeds. You should remember these leads. But if you forget, here's a simple method of getting the same result. First, estimate your lead. Fire a rocket using that lead and watch where it goes. Then use the distance between the target and the spot where the rocket went as your correction. For example, if you underestimate the speed of the target, you'll hit behind it. So use the length of your miss as your correction and add it to your estimated lead. This gives you your corrected lead. It's a simple method. It makes no difference if your first rocket is in front of the target or behind. You still take the distance between the target and the spot where the rocket went as the correction. Add the correction if the shot went behind the tank. Subtract it if your first shot went in front. Since there are no adjustments in the sight, you'll have to use Kentucky windage to estimate your lead. Here's the sight picture showing one lead on a tank at 100 yards. All sighting should be done with both eyes open. This is particularly important when you're tracking a moving target. When firing, wear goggles and, if available, a glove on the left hand. Now that you've got the target lined up, Let's talk about trigger manipulation. Use a smooth, steady, rearward pressure. Unlike the rifle, the trigger has no slack. And there's no recoil. Here's a rifle grenade. Watch the recoil. When the rocket fires, the launcher doesn't jump back. It takes a little time for the rocket to get out of the tube. So keep your sights lined up on the target until the rocket's left the launcher and is well on its way. When you're firing the rocket from foxholes or trenches, be sure the back end of the launcher is above the ground so the flash won't be deflected by the rear wall. That means you'll have to jump up, shoot, and duck. At night, the rocket has a distinctive flash to the rear, but no muzzle flash. Whenever possible, get into a position which will screen this flash. The same team is firing here, but they're properly screened and you can't spot them. Tank busting isn't the only use for this weapon. It's a jack of all work. You can use it as an anti-tank mine. First, pick out the spot where you want to plant it and dig a hole. Use the container as a guide for the rocket.
Punch a hole through the bottom. Then run wires through it. Ordinary twisted field telephone wire will do. Attach one wire to the wire leading to the brass contact ring on the nose. Attach the other to the unpainted notch of one of the fins. Then remove the safety pin and plug. It's loaded now, so be careful. Slide the rocket back in the container with the nose pointing out. Keep the contacts from fouling and place the carton in the hole. Lead the wires outside the hole to a concealed position. Pack dirt around the carton. Be sure to remove the excess dirt. The next step is camouflage. You can cover traces of your work with a branch, like this. The dry cell battery from the launcher is powerful enough for this job. Close your circuit when you want to fire. the tank will never know what hit it. Here's another trick. Bury the rocket horizontally in the side of a cut or bank like this. Use the dry cell battery as before. And one more tank crew will be singing, show me the way to go home. If you ever want to punch a hole in a pillbox or a wall, remember the rocket. And it can do a pretty job on other vehicles than tanks. One rocket in the cylinder block and the engine's ready for the scrap heap. Now that you know how to operate this new and deadly piece of ordnance and have been properly introduced to the bazooka and the three pounds of concentrated death and destruction which it will direct, let's see exactly what happens when you hit a tank. That target is a piece of heavy steel plate. You won't find many tanks with heavier protection. And even the biggest tanks have thinner armor in many places. A man against a tank might sound like David against Goliath. But just as sure as David's stone killed the giant, you can blast a tank with one of these rockets and here's the proof. A hole an inch in diameter, blown through the steel plate. And now take a look at this. These silhouette targets were placed four feet behind the steel plate. Every one of these holes was made by a flying fragment of red hot steel. And there are more than 200 of them. This is what happens to a tank crew when a rocket hits. This M6 rocket is tough on tanks if you know how to use it. This war moves fast. The Germans and Italians found that out in Africa. We picked up some things too. Even while this picture was being filmed, changes were being made in the bazooka and the rocket. 
changes based on the experience of the men who fired them overseas. In every case, the improvements you will find make your weapon simpler and more effective. Your launcher has an instruction tag. Read it. Every word is important from the first line to the last. Paste it in your memory. Follow its rules. Your bazooka will do the rest. Let's take up the changes in the launcher first. There's a wire wrapping of 20 inches at the rear end, from here to here. The contact box, which used to be in this position, has been removed. Instead, there are two spring contacts at the rear on either side of the launcher. These contacts are used in the new method of loading, which you'll see in a few moments. There's a sling on the new launcher. It makes it a lot easier to carry, and you can get it into firing position in a hurry. You may get a launcher which has no front hand grip. In this case, the left hand supports the tube and is placed directly in front of the trigger guard. There's a flash screen at the front end of the launcher to stop unconsumed particles of powder. Those are the changes in the launcher, and they're all designed to help you and destroy the enemy. Now let's take a look at the difference between the old rocket and the new one, called the M6A1 and, as here, the M7A1. You'll remember the old rocket had a contact band at the nose and a wire leading to it and extending down the side of the rocket. There was also a cord attached to the safety pin. In the new rocket, the band and the cord have been eliminated. The wire, which was here on the old rocket, is now coiled within the fin. Here's the new rocket, and you can see how much simpler it is. Now let's see the new method of loading. Slow that up and show you the changes. As before, the loader stands to the right, facing the gunner. The gunner taps the loader and says load. The loader repeats load and holding the rocket with his left hand, palm up, presses down the tail latch and pushes only the head of the rocket into the launcher. Now, the safety pin is removed and dropped. Remember, there is no cord on this new rocket. The rocket is pushed in until the tail latch catches in the notches of the tail fin. Now, here's something important. Up to this point, the rocket cannot be fired because the electric circuit has not been completed. The loader slides his right hand forward and with his left hand pulls the insulated tab of the coiled contact wire to the rear. Don't yank it. This wire must stay attached to the rocket. The next step is to draw the contact wire through the spring contact with the left hand. There are two of these contacts. If the loader is on the left of the gunner, he uses his right hand and the contact near him, like this. And note how easy this is. Don't try to wind the wire around the contact. Just slap it through. The bazooka is now ready to fire. The loader taps the gunner on the back and reports ready. And with a good team, ready is the word. There are several other improvements in the bazooka which you may see in the near future. For example, here's a two-piece launcher. This is designed for easy carrying and stowage and for special use by paratroopers. One quick turn and the launcher is ready for action. Next, there's a new electrical firing mechanism. This eliminates any battery difficulties. 
trigger manipulation is the same as before. Then there's the new optical sight, which gives the gunner a greater field of vision, and thus makes it easier for him to lead the target. When not in use, it's folded back against the launcher. And finally, there's the two-position metal stop. The small groove is used in the prone position, and the large one for all other positions. And with this stock, the launcher barrel is raised above the line of sight, allowing greater visibility. Well, that's it. The bazooka with these improvements is easier for you to handle and deadlier for the enemy to handle. Now learn and remember what you've seen in this film. You're going to be over there yourself.